Hello and welcome to the vlog. Today I'm at Hill Morton just outside Rugby. Hill Morton is notable for a couple of things. First of all, it's paired locks, that is to say two single locks next to each other. And secondly, those locks are the most heavily trafficked locks on the entire network, according to figures from the Canal and River Trust. But that's not why I'm doing a vlog here. For that, we need a little bit of history. The North Oxford Canal was originally built in around 1770, but by the early 1800s it was losing trade to other canals, so the owners needed to sort that situation out. The problem was the North Oxford was built as a contour canal, that is to say very wiggly. It's cheap to build, but it means that the route is very long. In order to make it more competitive, they needed to straighten it up and shorten the route, and that's exactly what happened with new building commencing in 1829 and the new route being finished in 1834. And here at Hill Morton is one of the points where the new straighter route of the canal diverges from the old route, and in fact I'm standing on what was the old route of the canal. I came past here almost a year ago and did an interview with the lock keeper who told me about a project to restore part of the old route into a basin for historic boats. Back then there wasn't much to see, just the blocked off end of the basin and the site clearly overgrown with trees, bushes and brambles. From the current canal there's simply a mass of reeds to be seen, with nothing giving away what lies behind. Today, progress is evident, even if slow. This is all being done by volunteers in their spare time. Work parties turning up to cut back the bracken, chop down the trees and clear out the base of what was the canal and what will become the basin. But this is just the beginning. The job starts when we've cleared it. Uh, then we've got to build a canal. The first thing we've got to do, and we're being advised by the Canal and River Trust chief engineer on this, uh, we've got to dig trenches to find out with how much clay is still there because you have to have clay to hold water. Not all canals in those days had clay linings, but we think this one probably has, although we haven't found it yet. So in a couple of weeks' time, we're going to dig exploratory trenches. Then when we've got to re-clay the canal where it's damaged, or if we don't find any clay, we've got to line it. we then got to put the uh, canal stone wall that we found, a dry stone wall that sits on top of the clay, we've got to put that back and so we'll have experts come in to show us how to do that. Uh, and then we have water tests. We'll let a little bit of water into a third of it and that'll sit there for a month and we'll see if it holds water. Then we'll do another third and then another third. When we pass all those tests and a soil test to make sure the soil's safe, we think it is, then we can let the water in. Now when that will happen, don't know. But we don't really mind when it happens because it's jolly good fun. And the more people who want to join in, the better. If you do fancy helping out, they'd be delighted. And don't worry, there are plenty of tea breaks and a chance to scoff a biscuit or two. Even non-human helpers are welcome, though I suspect they really are just here for the biscuits. This passing boater was delighted to get stuck in with some heavy lifting and barrowing. Yes, it's a shame to see trees being cut down, but they've grown up right in the middle of the old waterway and need to be cleared. There are going to be more trees planted along the sides, not to mention a dedicated reserve for butterflies, wildflowers and such like, so it's all good. As for the wood, well, there's nothing a narrow boater likes more than a good fire. Indeed, show any boater a chopped log and they're likely to set light to it. So it is with the scrub, undergrowth, twigs and branches being cleared from this site, a succession of bonfires gradually reducing the amount of wood that's otherwise unwanted. They can't just chop anything down willy-nilly though. This tree, for example, may house bats, so there's a survey to be done before any decision is made. Another interesting discovery lies near the entrance. You can just make it out behind that wood pile. It's an old ice-breaking boat, dragged into the arm 40 years ago or so and left to rot. Not quite historic, but an unusual find nonetheless. As to what the site will eventually look like, all being well, here's an artist's impression with old working boats lined up along the sides for locals and tourists to come and learn about. There'll be about a dozen, a dozen boats, 
and they'll all be fully restored uh, they, there won't be any sort of wrecks in here they uh, have to be members of the National Register of Historic Boats which is based in Greenwich and we have at the moment about six boats including the oldest boat that's still operative on the canal system in this country which is a steamboat it wasn't in steam when it first came on the canal because there were no diesel engines or steam engines when this was built but they, he wants to be based here because he can see the value of it in heritage terms we've got another couple who are retired teachers who are restoring a 1936 working boat 72 foot long full size for them to have educational days for children clearly there's much still to be done but with summer round the corner and more glorious days like this it shouldn't take long until the plan comes to fruition the basin ends after a couple of hundred yards but it's not the only place on the North Oxford where restorations underway if you followed the old route for a mile or so you'd come to here this footage taken last October before any work began it's like an Amazonian jungle trees grasses branches everything's overgrown but this is the same old route of the North Oxford unused and unwatered for about 180 years yes you can just see hints that clearance has begun piles of branches laid on their side obviously cut or sawn down but can you imagine the effort required to dig all this out and get it back into quite literally a ship-shaped condition peering over the banks reveals a glimpse of what a lovely spot this is open fields and countryside beyond and then in the distance spanning the canal an ancient brick bridge the same as all the others you find over the waterways but with earth sitting beneath it not water the bridge has seen better days clearly but let's not forget it was built in around 1830 so all things considered it's not doing too badly and what's this a table and chairs yes you see here's where the old route connects back to the new one and for the last few yards it's watered and full of boats the current canal you can't quite see but it runs from left to right about a third of the way down the picture so what's the plan here then well the land was bought by a hire boat company which already owns and runs those moorings we just saw and they wanted to open up some of the old canal as a new mooring arm that means you guessed it vegetation clearance trees coming down earth being dug out in vast quantities and basically a whole load of work it should be good though to see the old canal being brought back to life it does seem slightly odd standing at the bottom of a bit of canal that hasn't been used for a couple of hundred years but it's very nice to know that soon there will be boats on it again so it was that at the end of November work began in earnest with diggers brought in to take on the massive task of digging out the arm this inevitably went on for a while with tons and tons of mud and muck being scraped out of the arm and taken away by dumper trucks now that view can be seen much better it'll be a lovely spot to moor especially in summer further down half hidden in the brambles wooden stakes mark out the route that needs to be dug and this is where the new arm will end just a couple of weeks later and the heavy machinery is already down to that end it's all a bit squelchy but instead of a brambly track there's now a clear hint of canal the base several meters in width is flat and largely clay which is good because that's what keeps the water in a little more refinement is on the cards but essentially that's a canal at the bridge some repairs required by the canal and river trust parts of the brickwork being chopped out and replaced good for another 200 years maybe you'd think the whole thing would need taking down and rebuilding but apparently just these bits are sufficient and very nice it looks too and yes that is water you can see below with the canal trench dug a small hole was punched into the retaining wall under the bridge and very gradually water from the canal pound 
which runs all the way from Hill Morton to Hawkesbury, began to trickle into the few hundred yards of the new arm. Gradually, bit by tiny bit, the water made its way down the arm to the new end stop. Finally, some days later, and just as the light was beginning to fade on the day, the arm was full, the block under the bridge was dug out, and the new arm was ready for boats. So the site owner and his family were the first people to make a boat trip along this bit of the canal in 180 years. Gently under the bridge and around the corner at two miles an hour. Today, there's still plenty of work to be done. The sides need proper metal piling driven in so as to shore up the slope. But there is mains power and water to stanchions along the arm, so moorers are in and wired up. An eclectic mix of boats and people and their dogs have arrived from all over the canal system. And so, the North Oxford has a little bit of new life breathed back into it. That's it for this vlog. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.